Let's go straight to the Super Eagles who have not been at their best so far. And the two qualifiers played against Lesotho and Zimbabwe. The recent one was against Zimbabwe where they played out a one-all draw. And fans all over the world who support Nigeria football are very, very sad and disappointed with how the Super Eagles have performed in those two qualifiers. And they're calling for the head of the coach right there, talking about uh, Jose Becerro. But the question is, is the coach... Uh, the man to be blamed or should we blame the players or the goalkeeper who will be blamed for the poor performances of the Super Eagles of Nigeria and uh, that's what we'll be looking at today on the show assessing the performance of Nigeria in those two qualifiers because we've seen the big boys the likes of Egypt, Algeria, South Africa topping the group currently uh, that has Nigeria, Lesotho and Zimbabwe uh, they are topping the group and Nigeria comes second but other big boys are proving themselves right there on the football pitch, defeating teams that are lesser than them. But of course, joining us to talk about this is an ex-international who once played for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And there was a post on Twitter that had Taribo West and the other players saying that, look, we need these players who knew what it meant to wear the Nigeria Super Eagles jersey and they would bleed for that jersey because they wanted to get victory. They wanted to get all points, all the trophies possible to win. I've got uh, Emmanuel Amoneke joining us on the show today, and I'm not sure if he is in a happy mood because of Nigeria's performance so far in the World Cup qualifiers. Good to have you with us, Emmanuel. Yeah, good morning. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much for joining. You don't look quite happy. Is it because of what happened uh, with the Super Eagles of Nigeria? I'm sure you're disappointed with that performance. Uh, well, we are uh, disappointed about the game. And uh, uh, probably the players in question, they will be more, much more disappointed the way the game went. And uh, that is not what they planned for. They wanted to you know, win their game first in Nigeria against Loseto and then uh, go into Zimbabwe. Even if they cannot win, they can pick a point. But unfortunately, uh, it has not worked out the way you know, they expected. And uh, uh, we all know the importance of uh, you know, uh, winning your games, because that will give you the confidence you know, to approach in your next game. But unfortunately, you know, uh, things are not working the way we expected. But uh, I could only say no one is happy, because uh, looking at our country and uh, how passionate uh, when it comes to game and uh, how people are, yeah, of course, football you know, relieves a lot of uh, stress from people. Football unites Nigeria. Football brings happiness to the people. And uh, when your team you know, is not uh, going the way you, uh, you expected, then of course people will not be happy. Uh, but uh, we just need to remain focused and remain calm, and then look at what can we do, you know, to turn things around. All right. So you could uh, from the video you're seeing right now, uh, the players are on board the plane. They've actually landed uh, Nigeria, but sadness is showing on their faces. They are quite disappointed with that performance. But should Nigerians uh, forgive them? and look forward to the AFCON proper in uh, 2024? Or should we call for a change in the national team, talking about the players and the coach? Because a lot of fans are saying the coach should go. Well, uh, myself, I'm a coach. And, uh, I don't like talking about my colleagues, because uh, uh, we are all in one, uh, how would I put it? We are all in one journey that leads to one end, which is coaching. I don't like talking about the coaching, but I can only say one thing that is uh, that uh, we have to, I think, uh, over the years when you analyze our team, we, we have to change our ways of doing things. What am I really saying? Uh, uh, suddenly we have uh, created a scenario whereby uh, we believe only that those playing abroad you know, are better than those playing in Nigeria, which is, which is accepted, but the fact is that uh, when you want to have a solid team, a good team, you have to look at you know, uh, not just based on uh, talent of the player. You have to look at the commitment of the player uh, from personal and collective effort. And then you have to look at players individually. Uh, in, in a position, you can have a lot of uh, players here, but you have to look at the players. Can they fit into the plans that uh, you, you know, as a coach, uh, want the team, the direction you want the team to function. These are things you need to look. You don't just uh, base your judgment on uh, we have good players. Uh, football has gone beyond that because 
You have to make sure that every department uh, you have in the team are functional. Even if you have the best player in your team, you must have other players that can complement the effort of those best, uh, best players. So it's, it's very, very critical. Uh, when you see that and then you analyze your team uh, from a, a honest point of view, and then you come up with the plans in terms of, okay, uh, we are going with these players. And also the players in question, they must understand uh, what is being expected from them. In a national team, I think uh, having the privilege to play for national team in the mix of 200 uh, millions of Nigerians or 250 millions of Nigerians, and uh, you've been selected among the 23 or 25 players, I think it's a, it's a privilege. And uh, the players in question, they must realize it, that uh, uh, commitment is key, uh, the desire to win is key. Uh, because at the end of the day, you won't be there forever. Uh, there will come another generation knocking behind. They want to take over. And people will always respect you in what you have done. So I'm the opinion of, uh, you know, we should look at any world and build a team where individually and collectively everybody should understand their responsibility. Mm, true. I like what you talked about, the commitment, and uh, knowing that this is the time you have to prove yourself that uh, a time will come when you will fade away and another set of players will get to take over. But it looks like Nigerians have not gotten over the fact that we've not been able to replace the likes of J.J. Okocha, Akano Wanko, and even you yourself, Emmanuel Amuneke, who played for the Super Eagles of Nigeria and scored great goals for Nigeria. I mean, when you played for Nigeria, your team, your, your squad players bled for the country. You knew what it meant to deliver uh, victory for Nigeria. And the fans also knew what it meant. I mean, I could tell a lot of football fans, even music stars, had to do songs specifically for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. But it looks like that love is beginning to fade because some fans have the opinion that these players are not ready to bleed for the country. Uh, getting international players to come play for Nigeria who are more committed to their clubs than playing for Nigeria. Uh, I think that the fans, they have all the rights, you know. Uh, in a football game, both the players and the fans, there must be that connection, you know, that unites them together. There must be that passion, and there must be that zeal and desire that, you know, uh, makes the fans to troop into the stadium, you know, to support their team. And uh, when the fans are sensing that uh, such is not existing, I think that you have to give them that respect and that credit. But like I said, you know, uh, we have to. I think uh, what really happens to we Nigerians, if we can reflect back, is that uh, in the early 90s, you know, uh, we'd be so successful in terms of, uh, we'd be blessed that a crop of players, you know, uh, came into a certain generation and uh, uh, we dwell our success based on uh, our present achievement, which we were succeeding, you know, we achieved winning the Olympic, winning the Afcon, you know, qualifying for the World Cup. Uh, but really, we, we have never really, you know, uh, uh, gone deep to reflect that uh, the game in question is uh, evolving and is changing. Uh, what can we do uh, in terms of, you know, developing our players back home? What can we do in terms of, you know, enhancing the knowledge of our coaches that are the primary objective of you know, developing these young players. I think we lost a little bit of track about that. And then suddenly we realized that uh, the generations that uh, we have lived with, that have brought so much joy to Nigeria, uh, some of them are now, you know, age is catching up, injury is catching up. And then uh, we ended up in times of, uh, okay, who is available coming to the team and start playing. I think uh, this is one of the biggest mistakes we have done uh, as a country when it comes to our football. But nothing is spoiled. You can see, you know, uh, some things around. The players play in Nigeria. We shouldn't, you see, we shouldn't uh, create a, a scenario where those players play in Nigeria. You know, feel as if they are not part of the project. Uh, the national team is a project, and uh, it, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter which religion you belong to or tribe. Uh, as long as you're a good player, and as long as this player can progress, both from youth level uh, to the senior level, I believe everyone is, you know, deserves to be given opportunity. And I think we have to look inward. Uh, 
uh, those players play with Nigeria. Uh, uh, we must not bring everybody, but at least we couldn't we could say that uh, there could be four or five players. If we can mix them, give them time, be patient, and then they will grow. And then our young players also at youth level. Uh, yes, yeah, Nigeria we have won the World Cup at uh, the 17 level five times, uh, which is a very, very good record. Of course, we expect and we believe to win more. But of course, we also must realize other countries are catching up. And uh, how can we develop our players from technical to tactical aspect of the game? Even from the psychological point of view, we shouldn't forget that these players are human and they have their shortcomings, they have their sadness, they have their good moments, they have their bad moments. So when we have these uh, plans where we can you know, always enhance uh, our players, not only from the holistic point of view, uh, then I think we can, we can say in every short period of time we are having players from this level graduate. Uh, and uh, every reasonable and uh, country that uh, want their country to develop, they are following this uh, this uh, trade. I can give you an example. In Spain here, uh, they have uh, suddenly created what we call regional national team. And uh, what does it mean? Uh, all these things in, in Spain here, all the region, they have their own national team. And then they develop their national team. At what point of the time, the main federation, they organize within this region, a national team in the place where the players play within themselves, play against themselves. And from there, uh, they begin to identify the players at young age, 12, from that 12, they have on that 12, they have on that 14, they have on that 16. So I think also, uh, be knowing the complex and uh, the sensitive in Nigerian uh, environment and the players, I think if we can also you know, create this avenue where we assign responsibilities to the state efforts, where they can also be relevant in their own state, where the coaches also, in various states, they can be relevant. And I think this will be a very good uh, direction for us you know, to see how we can develop our players, not just waiting for the leader trade. But nothing comes easy in life. Uh, nothing comes easy, and there is no guarantee that this is going to be, you know, easy. But if you believe in what you are doing and uh, remain patient and remain focused and remain calm, and I believe at the end of the day, you know, the result will come to show. All right, of course, that's what the fans are looking at for, the results coming to show for the efforts put in by the players. Now, what's your take uh, as a coach? Because uh, um, fans are saying that, look, you shouldn't have started Boniface and another striker. But yes, Victor Simon is, he, Victor Simon is currently injured. But what's your take on the formation of the coach using two strikers to um, play these games and yet none of the strikers have been able to deliver on the football pitch? He had to take Kelechi Yanacho coming off the bench yesterday to score the only goal for Nigeria to ensure uh, that one or draw? Well, uh, my take is not just about uh, the formation of the team. Uh, uh, system of the game, uh, whether you play in 4 2 2 or whether you play in 4 3 3, I think it's just merely a position uh, where the players in question identify their function and uh, their position. And I think uh, what is key. And uh, important is uh, the functioning of the players uh, from tactical point of view in that position, and uh, uh, the cohesion of the team uh, in terms of when they have the ball and when they don't have the ball. And uh, these are things uh, you know that need to be worked out. Right? You can tell people that okay, you play as a striker, you play for the defender, but there has to be. Uh, a common uh, idea where the players, from individual point of view uh, to collective point of view, understood their responsibilities. Uh, we have top players, which is uh, important to us, but also uh, we cannot dwell on thinking just based on uh, we have uh, these good players. We should remember these players, uh, they are playing in Europe, they are playing with uh, different players with a whole lot of talent. And then when you bring these players to the national team, which uh, most time you don't have enough time, you know, to to build these players to understand the level. But it is important to have a direction, and when a team, you know, uh, has a direction, it really shows from the players. It really shows in the level of their commitment, and this is what we need to look at. We should go back and re and reflect 
And what happened to us in the last half uh, in uh, against Tunisia? And I, I remember that game very well. I was in Darul covering that uh, that group uh, as one of the camp uh, technical study group in the uh, TSG in Darul. And I remember the, the two days before that game, uh, the belief was Nigeria is going to beat Tunisia, and everybody, you know, have assumed that uh, Tunisia is going to lose that game. But uh, when the game started, we saw different colors from Tunisia. They were able, you know, to reduce us. They were able to to separate us from tactical point of view, they were able to bring us to their level, irregardless of we have good players. But what I'm really saying is that uh, we shouldn't base our judgment just because we have players. We need to look at how we can work on these players, for them to really understand themselves, for them to really, you know, know. If you have a striker that always moves to space, uh, how do you feed your striker to be able to be useful? If you have a striker that is good, how do other players complement the effort of the player? How do you defend when you are not in a position of the ball? Uh, you don't view the team where maybe three is defending and the rest is not defending. So uh, I think it's a, it's a general concept in terms of where people need to sit, have a common dialogue, uh, talking about the team, have a common dialogue, review themselves. Uh, there is not no crime in criticizing yourself. Because the excess of criticizing yourself as a team is because you, you believe there is room for improvement, you believe you can you know, develop. And these are what way of going, you know, uh, going forward. All right. Uh, you know, uh, from the conversation, I like what you said earlier when you talked about uh, the players who play on the home front, that's the Nigeria Premier Football League. They should also be tried. And uh, uh, there's a question now that should we really stop looking out for these international players? Because it feels like year in, year out, we keep discovering these players out there. Now we've discovered Nathan Taylor, who played a few minutes. He started the game, and he had to be substituted just for Kelechi Yenachor to come in and score that goal. Should we stop investing in these players who play their trade in Europe and invest more in the Nigeria Premier Football League players? Because uh, if you agree with me, a lot of superstars are there in the MPFL playing football, local football, and they are doing amazing things in their clubs. Well, I agree with you in terms of uh, we have to invest in both. Uh, those, those, those players playing outside, they are our pride. And uh, uh, we are happy to have our players, you know, doing very well in Europe. And at the same time also, the ones playing at home, we must, you know, create an avenue also where they can uh, grow and fit into our plan. It's a plan. It's not a, a, an individual uh, thing. It's not a self uh, Realize uh, activity. It's a question of what can we do, knowing that okay, the players playing in Nigeria, they might not be to the level of uh, the ones playing in Europe. Uh, how can we bring in, bring them in into the team and give them time and encourage them, and with time they will become the same. Uh, the ones playing outside also. How can we look at those that uh, you know we can bring into the team? Because it's a project. You can't just go. I say because you have uh, uh, 10 players. No, you have to look at the players, analyze the players, and look at what they can bring into the team uh, and what they cannot bring into, into the team. And then you find a common balance. So I'm always of the opinion of that uh, both those playing in Nigeria and those playing outside, you know, they deserve to be in the national team. As long as, from individual point of view, these players are committed. Because other national team put in Europe here, it doesn't matter where you play. What people are looking at is commitment. And if that commitment is there, I can tell you uh, the super egos, they can beat anybody. Mm. All right, we're looking forward to when Nigeria will be able to beat teams convincingly well on the football pitch. And we hope that day comes very soon because the fans are not happy. But as I let you go, what will be your advice to the coach, Joseph Pesero, who seems to be under immense pressure? Well, I wish him well. He should, he should go back and look at his team and then look at the areas they can reinforce. Uh, that's what I want to say to him. I wish him very well. All right. I wish him, Joseph Pesero, very well. And fans are still calling for ex-internationals to come take charge of the Super Eagles. And your name is on the list, Emmanuel Amuneke, uh, to be the manager and coach of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. And I hope that day will come very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you.
All right. Thank you very much for joining us today, Manuel Amuneke, and we wish you very well in all your uh, endeavors. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you too.